OK, everybody, settle down and listen up. Now, does anyone remember when this took place? Since Renier of Monaco and Princess Grace Patricia, formerly Grace Kelly, the film star, were married this morning in Monaco Cathedral. Well, that was 40 years ago, the spring of 1956. I had just turned nine. And that wedding of the decade might never have happened for all the effect it had on me. Because right then, I was fully occupied with trying to start my first novel. No, I wasn't that precocious. I was trying to read one, not trying to write one. It was called Coral Island, and I was stumped on the first word of the very first sentence. Roving has always been, and still is, my ruling passion. The joy of my heart the very sunshine of my existence. Roving. Roving. What the b was roving? My vocabulary then owed a little to primary school English classes and a little more to D.C. Thompson's publications. But the word roving hadn't featured in either, so I couldn't make any sense of that first sentence. There seemed to be no point in reading on, so I gave up. But the next day I tried again. Roving has always been, and still is, my ruling passion. The joy of my heart, the very sunshine of my existence. The night had not brought enlightenment, and I was still none the wiser. So, what to do? Well, I did what children in similar situations naturally do. Ask somebody. I spoke to Mary, my big sister, by three years. The book, in fact, belonged to her. It was a present the previous Christmas from our father, together with... Alice in Wonderland. Now, the Alice story is obviously suitable for a 12-year-old girl, but Coral Island is an adventure yarn for boys, and it still puzzles me why he gave Mary that book too. Maybe it was one of the very earliest attempts at gender neutralising. Or had he bought it from me, but decided later that I didn't have the ability to read it then? The real reason, I suspect, was that it was indirectly a Christmas present to himself. Whatever about that, Mary couldn't explain to my satisfaction what a roving meant. So instead she proposed a direct, practical approach to the problem. Why don't you look it up in the dictionary? A dictionary? Why, yes, it made sense. I knew what a dictionary was, a collection of all the words there are, and all listed in sequence from A to Z. Why, the idea is so simple that even a child could use it. The family's dictionary, acquired through an exchange of cigarette tokens, was the biggest item in our small, lately stocked bookcase. Its blockish bulk was proof of a comprehensiveness that was only slightly diminished by it no longer having a cover and the first few pages for the letter A. But as all the oars were there, no difficulties were expected as I found the right page and scanned down to where the word must be. Routine, rove, rover, row, Roving didn't seem to be there. I checked again. Root, routine, rove, rover, row, rowdy. No, I hadn't missed it. It wasn't there. What I didn't know then was how to check for verbal nouns. Understandably so, as I hadn't a clue then what a verbal noun was. At nine years old, my comprehension of grammatical structure was slight smaller even than my store of words, and that was pretty minuscule, as can be seen by my puzzlement over the words from the refrain of a song that was played frequently on the wireless back then. To go back home, never more to run, is my dearest wish of all. I couldn't figure out why the singer didn't wish, as I thought, to revisit her home. What I didn't realise with my tiny vocabulary was that the word pronounced Rome has another, different meaning. I thought she meant Rome, the city where the Pope lived. Anyway, that was a mystery I didn't intend to waste much time on. I suspected that that song had to do with things that went on between big people. I was confident that an understanding would arrive with adulthood, and so decided to ignore it in its apparent paradox. Right then, with boyhood's fire in my blood, I hated a different but equally strong imperative that was addressed by songs like Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. 
as well as this. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. Forget about romance. That stuff didn't make any sense. Bows and arrows, muskets, beaver tail hats, and a world of bad and good were the things that mattered. The cover illustration of Coral Island promised a tactile realm filled with treasure chests, secret charts, pirate ships, palm trees and parrots. I was determined to possess that world. It would be mine. Oh yes, it would be mine. I wasn't going to give up on that book and I returned to Mary for new advice. Why don't you just keep going and maybe you'll understand what it is later on. So, I tried again. Roving has always been and still is my ruling passion. The joy of my heart the very sunshine of my existence. It still didn't make sense, but heeding Mary's advice, I kept going. In childhood, in boyhood, and in man's estate, I have been a rover, not a mere rambler among the woody glens and upon the hilltops. Sentence followed tortured sentence as each page was laboriously completed. But the pages gradually mounted up to measure progress in chapters, and with no other major obstacles, completion would be inevitable. A mere matter of time. The doors of perception weren't exactly cleansed, more a light rub with a damp cloth, but gradually an understanding of roving emerged. Many other new words were met, and while some had to be ignored, others were worried into an understanding of sorts. At 80 pages daily, a rate I wouldn't try to match now, the book was finished in three days. For we were at length homeward bound, and were gradually leaving far behind us the beautiful bright green coral islands of the Pacific Ocean. The story within Coral Island about the adventures of Ralph Rover and his two companions brought great enjoyment. But the real reward was the sense of achievement gained from having read an actual novel. And that was not devalued by the inability of schoolmates to recognise its significance. Like a first pair of long trousers, it marked an entree to the world of adults, or what these days is called a rite of passage. Across four decades, that first sentence and those events have stayed in memory, and a wish to reread the book grew and grew until eventually it couldn't be ignored. The original copy had long ago disappeared to who knows where. But was Carl Island still in print today? Hello, can I help you? Hello, how are you doing? Can you check if you have a book in stock? It's uh, called Carl Island. Coral Island? Yeah. Do you have an author with that? I think it's Ballantyne is the author. It, we, we would have to place an order for um, for you and it would take about three weeks. Okay. Okay. When we post your note. Okay. It comes in. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Three weeks later, after an exchange of 99 pence, I flicked in, barely suppressing a feeling of equanimity, to compare that opening line with its sense from memory. Roving has, has always, always been, been and, and still, still is, is my ruling, my ruling passion. passion, the joy, joy of my heart, the very, the very sunshine, sunshine of, of my existence. existence. So far, I haven't read any further. That can wait for another time. For the moment, it's enough to just own a copy. But today, 40 years on and looking back over my shoulder down memory lane along the space-time continuum to round about that leafy glade where the rhododendrons grew, three lessons are clear. One, put not your faith in dictionaries alone. These days I examine them less for what they contain and more for what they omit. Two, it's not essential to understand every word and phrase to benefit from a printed work. However, if you're buying insurance or signing for anything, this advice should very definitely be ignored. And three, and most important, is to do with a lesson on industry and persistence that was continually preached at school. It was even illustrated and emphasised by way of a story about a cave, a spider, and Robert the Bruce. We were meant to chant it over and over and over and over and over. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again.